Welcome to everyone from all parts of Canada um, to our live to our live away Sicily uh, presentation today. Uh, and uh, just a couple of words. Uh, I just thought I'd pop in a photo here. This was our live away group in Cyprus. Uh, earlier this year, we were there in March. We had a marvelous time. We a little bit of it. We got off to a bit of a chilly start, um, but uh, this is what was on one of our impromptu outings, and that's one of the things that makes uh, our live away programs uh, a little bit different, a little bit more exciting and adventurous. Is because we just do things spontaneously, and that's um, we. If you see the testimonials. Uh, that we've gotten from some of our members who participated in our last couple of trips. They all noted that they really appreciated the fact that, you know, it's not like a regular tour program in that, you know, you have a schedule every day. I mean, of course, we have excursions and activities that we do uh, on a regular basis throughout, um, but there's also time to just do spontaneous stuff like we had in that last photo. And in doing so, invariably, you just you develop a bit of a connection to your fellow travelers and uh and that's what wheel and anchor is all about is bringing travelers together who have a bit of a like-minded view of of the world and how they like to travel and how they like to take time and enjoy and suck up the culture and all of the um, aspects of it and that's our mission at wheel and anchor and so far i think we're succeeding on that um, because we've been having a great time so far since we've been starting traveling earlier this year uh, the team joining me today, my name is Gordon. I am the founder of Wheel and Anchor. I'm joined by uh, Paula Zarnick, who many of you will have spoken to. She is our senior trip specialist and is the one that gets to deal with all you front and center whenever you have questions or whenever you are interested in joining us on a trip. Uh, and of course, Joel, my co-founder, who creates these wonderful presentations that I get to deliver every week. Today, um, it's all about taking you on a journey uh, through this wonderful island in the Mediterranean Sea. It's part of a series of programs that I'll touch on in a moment. And I'm going to be your virtual guide today as we look at Sicily, where we're headed in March of next year. Just a couple of words to the idea behind Liveaways. A few key points here. First of all, it's a long stay. In other words, we typically stay one month. It could be two times two weeks. Uh, in a place like Sicily, for example, uh, where it's such a big island, we couldn't cover the whole thing uh, from just one location, or at least not without a lot of driving. Um, or like in Cyprus as well, we do two centers. Uh, in um, so we, But in any event, it's all about a longer period of time. That enables us to really settle in um, and not be on the clock all the time. Uh, we also travel in uh, smaller groups. So the group that goes over on a live away might be a bigger group, it might be 20 or 30 or 40 people, but the sightseeing that we do, we break it into smaller groups of typically around yeah, 8 to 10 to 12 people, um, and that enables you to get a, a much more intimate uh, experience in the destination. Um, and again, also, as I mentioned before, we foster these um, sort of impromptu get togethers, uh, you know, we did some musical and some entertainment evenings that we didn't that were weren't planned, we found out about them when we were there, we organized a bunch of people, we had a great time. So it's like a hybrid between traveling independently, uh, and traveling with a group and we think it's the, the perfect hybrid. And so that's why we're um, introducing more and more of these live away programs. Another interesting thing is the idea is, is that what we're working towards is more of the ability to combine two destinations. So that's going to be new for this year. Um, and so looking at Sicily, um, you could either, for example, go to Madeira for a month or two weeks and then come to Sicily, or you could go to, um, uh, sorry, this is Madeira here, and the, on the right-hand side is the picture of Sicily, or you could go to Malta, which immediately precedes uh, this program in Sicily for two weeks program, uh, and then come to, to the first part of Sicily. You could then continue on to the next part of Sicily. Um, you could also do uh, this program and continue on to Cyprus, which is um, going to happen immediately after. So there's various combinations you could do I think that any of these places you could spend a whole month in, um, and some of them like Madeira, oh, it seemed like the month just flew by because we had so many things to do and, and, and so much fun there. Um, but for some people, it's like two weeks is enough. So this way you can sort of string them together depending on the timing of them. And uh, not only here, but also on our liveaways that we're doing in Southeast Asia, in Thailand and Koh Samui and in Bali, uh, as well as New Zealand those ones you can also string together. So um, 
it's a nice way to travel. Uh, I've just returned to Europe, been through all the headaches of air travel now. Um, it's going to take a while for the industry to get sorted out. So if you're going to travel overseas, why not stay a little bit longer? Um, so anyway, that gives you just a little bit of a sense of what it's all about. Why did we choose Sicily? Well, uh, we've had so far very successful programs in Madeira, in Cyprus, uh, in Tuscany. Um, we're repeating all of those ones next year, and we're looking for places that we can go in the latter part of winter uh, when the weather at home is still kind of crap, uh, and uh, the weather here is uh, much, much milder. So this part of the central part of the Mediterranean it's not summer yet, it's not, certainly not 30 degrees, um, but it's also shoulder season. So there's a, a fraction of the people that you find in some of these destinations in the summertime when it's really overrun with tourism. They're just sort of starting off their season. So you get to enjoy these beautiful towns with a fraction of the people, you have lovely weather, uh, and Sicily itself, well, it's so full of, um, of, of history and, and culture and food um, and Mount Etna. Uh, I mean, there's so many things to do in Sicily. And so we've divided it, as I say, into two weeks, one on the East Coast, that's what we're going to talk about today, and one on the North Coast that I will be presenting in a couple of weeks' time. So let me give you a little bit of an overview of our program. Our destination for the first two weeks of our Sicily program is a, a city called Syracuse, um, which again is on the East Coast. If you look at the inset map um, down at the bottom, um, you can see how Sicily is kind of shaped. It's the boot of Italy, but it's shaped a little bit like a triangle. And we're on that right hand, that East Coast. Um, and Syracuse is about a 45 minute drive south of Catania, which is the major city and one of two where there is an airport uh, on Sicily. So if you were coming in just to this part of the program, you'd fly into Catania. If you are joining us, for example, from Malta, which I know there's a number of members that are waiting for this because they've already signed up for Malta and they are uh, anxious to, to come along on this program, then we're gonna take the ferry from Valletta to a town, a port town that's about 30 minutes drive away. And we're gonna be staying in Ortigia, which is a little, it's like, an, it's really an island off of Syracuse that's full of uh, history and the, the, these, these buildings that are, um, how can I describe it? If you've been to Florence, if you've been to some of the, the, the cities more in the northern part of Italy, they're immaculately restored. And here, they're sort of on the way to being restored, but they still have this charm about them, narrow alleyways, um, cafes in the streets. Uh, it's just, it's an absolutely magical place. You'll see it um, in the pictures as we go through the presentation. From this point here, there's a bunch yeah. of interesting things in the area that we can visit, uh, including Mount Etna itself, which is of course the volcano that you see at the top of the map. It's about uh, an hour drive away from Syracuse, uh, the medieval city of Noto. We can visit nature reserves. Uh, like the, there's a huge, they have like a Grand Canyon not far away from Noto, um, the nature reserve at Mendicari, we're going to go sailing on the Mediterranean, there's a whole bunch of things um, in the immediate area that will keep us more than busy. So here's a shot of uh, the peninsula the fortress that forms the end of Ortigia. You've probably never heard of it before. It's not a place that a lot of Canadians come and frequent. It's part of the reason why I think it's interesting and exciting to come here. Um, but it is gradually more and more becoming on the tourist map. So we want to get in there um, before sort of the, the masses arrive. Uh, as I say, this is a town that is full of narrow winding streets. I guarantee you, you, the first couple of days, you will get completely lost. But because it's an island and it's actually barely a kilometer from one side to the other, you can't get that far lost. Um, and that's, again, part of the charm of it is, is that you find all these little trattorias and uh, little eno enotecas, like wine bars on all the different streets, not to mention cool little shops. I got this fantastic leather bag down there. Um, but anyway, enough about that. We are staying at a residence hotel called Alagioteca, which is right in the heart of all of this. And you can see here, you get a flavor of what it's like. It's like old world Italy. It's got a, um, an atrium in the middle of it. Um, and, and so you, the whole vibe of it is quite um, charming and old, but it's uh, quite a well-restored hotel. Um, in this, the, the hotel itself has a, a, a spa on it. Uh, I think they call it a Japanese spa. Um, 
And the rooms are um, uh, all equipped with a, a kitchenette. They're quite generously sized. So you've got, um, you know, a nice, a nice big bed, a little living area and a kitchenette. That's kind of the theme that we are going for in a lot of our live away programs, wherever we can find places like this. Breakfast will be right on site. Uh, and from here, as I say, you're basically right in the heart of this of this um, peninsula, this this village, if you will, called Ortigia. Um, here's a, a shot at the uh, the Duomo, the cathedral in the town. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what you might do on an average day there. Uh, I'll give you a, an overview of some of the excursions and activities. We've got a bunch of them laid out already, but probably more still to come as we determine how many people actually come with us on the trip. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, as, as and I'm, we're constantly looking for new ideas and new people to work with and new experiences, um, frankly, right up until the trip leaves. And that's kind of the exciting part about it. On an average day here, um, if you're not joining us on one of the excursions, you'll probably go for a walk along the seafront. You can see this, uh, this, uh, this uh, sidewalk, this pathway, which runs basically right around the island. There's little restaurants and cafes. You look out at the Mediterranean. If the weather's nice, you can actually even go into the sea. It's a little bit cool um, in March still. So for, for most, it's probably not quite bathing weather yet. Um, but nevertheless, it's just there's lots of little nooks and crannies where you can hang out, and just, um, you know, read a book and relax if you're not off on one of our adventures. And as I say, there's, there's some very interesting artisans um, and shops and crafts and, and just neat little places to hang out. Um, the greater city of Syracuse has also some, um, uh, some Roman ruins. There's a, there's a massive Colosseum. You'll see a picture of it in a second that we're going to be visiting on uh, uh, one of our tours of, uh, of Syracuse and Ortigia. Uh, so you can venture also out uh, into, the, into the wider area. Uh, there's a train station in Syracuse just off the island of Ortigia. So you're able to get around as well on your own. Um, they also have boats for, uh, for, for, for rent and for charter. So you can go out into, there's a little harbor area. So there's really plenty to do. And that's what I like. I find it's the right size town that two weeks is a, is a great amount of time to spend here. Talking about some of the day excursions that we're going to do, I'm just going to give you a brief overview in the brochure. We're going to describe them in, in more detail. And then, of course, we have a supplement um, which gives the details of, of all the excursions uh, and, and the price and so on. So, And that we update, as I say, as we develop more and more ideas uh, and get more people excited about. So Sicily, uh, and in particular Syracuse, um, was on the crossroads of sort of the Roman trails, and that's why you see this massive Colosseum here. The whole region around, uh, around Syracuse, I mean, basically the whole island of Sicily, frankly, is rife with both Greek and Roman ruins, because of course the Greeks came, Greeks came back, came through this area back in the early part of the 12th, 11th century. So um, you have different cultures that have passed through and left behind um, the marks like you see at this, uh, at this Colosseum that is just outside of Ortigia in the city of Syracuse. We're going to go on the Godfather tour. So the, the famous uh, movie that we're all too familiar with, The Godfather, obviously parts of it were filmed in Sicily. So we're going to take in a few of these little towns that are up in the hills surrounding Syracuse, where um, you'll probably recognize some of the um, some of the filming locations. So this is always kind of fun because, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, when we think about Sicily, we often think about, you know, the mafia and the godfather and all of those things that are associated with it. And, you know, there's, there's still a, a portion of that that is, you know, very much alive and well in Sicily. And we'll learn a little bit about that and how uh, the impact that that's had on life and on the local economy. Um, but there's also the, the Hollywood side of it. And that's what we'll see on the Godfather tour. Um, you can't visit uh, Sicily or at least the east part of Sicily without going to see Mount Etna. Um, this is one of Europe's um, last remaining 
uh, well, last is, I shouldn't say last, you never know these days, but it's it's one of Europe's only uh, active volcanoes. So Etna erupts um, relatively recently. In fact, the last time was only about four years ago. Um, and as you drive up to Etna, uh, the top of which is about, it's not all that high, it's just over 10,000 feet, close to 11,000 feet, about 3,300 meters at the top. Um, but you see the lava flows that like literally have come down and just buried over sort of villages. Uh, and as I say, the last one wasn't all that long ago. So um, that is not meant to sort of scare you off either. I climbed up as far as high up as you can go, Mount Etna, as I say, just a few weeks back, uh, and it's sort of smoking away, but it's in one of its calm phases. And of course, everybody hopes it'll stay that way for a while. Um, but it is really amazing if you haven't stood on an active volcano before, um, the, the feeling of being up there, the smell of sulfur that's in the air that you get from, um, from the smoke that still billows out of the top of the volcano, and the view, because of course Etna is a standalone, so everything around you can see all the way down to Catania, to Taormina, uh, and into the hills uh, up to the north. So um, we're probably going to do two different excursions to uh, Etna. We'll do a more active one, a hiking one, where we'll go with a local guide who will take us um, to see some of the places where, um, where uh, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the lab or the hot ashes immediately below the surface and you see the smoke piling up. And of course, those areas you can only visit with a guide, but we'll also make sure that we have one where you can get all the way to the top between the cable car uh, and some um, special um, volcano jeeps that take you up to a high point where you get to take in the view without having to do all the exercise of hiking. So um, for sure, as I say, one of a couple of trips we're going to offer up to Etna. We're going to go down to this town of Noto, which I popped by as well when I was over there. Um, this is another beautiful medieval city, and the plan is to go there in the evening because when they light up some of these ancient ruins, not to mention the, the, the more modern ones, you know, the cathedral that's only a few centuries old, um, and it is just such a magical place. So we're going to try to combine it uh, with, um, uh, you know, one of our, you know, famed wheel and anchor, you know, I don't say gourmet, but um, extravagant meals. Um, who knows, maybe a concert at the theater if we time it right. Um, but uh, just a visit to Noto itself will be well worth it. Of course, being on the sea, we can't not go for a sailing experience. Um, and this will give us a, 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 a glimpse of the coastline looking from uh, from the sea. So, you know, we'll we'll pass by, for example, Vendicari. So we'll see the green, the nature reserve, the preserved part of the island, but also um, Ortigia and Syracuse itself. And um, you can, of course, on a clear day, see Mount Etna in the background. So it's always nice when you're on the sea to do a little bit by boat because it gives you a different um, perspective on everything. Catania is the largest city in this part of Sicily. As I say, it's uh, um, the airport that one flies into if one's coming to, to this region. Um, and quite a grand city itself. It sits immediately in the shadow of Mount Etna. Uh, so uh, I, was, uh, I was reading some of the travel guides uh, about Catania after having been there. Uh, you know, and they talk about, oh, if you hear the alarms, you know, you have to flee immediately. But volcanoes never work like that. They're always more than enough advanced warning. <laughs> so you don't have to be concerned. Um, but it's interesting the vibe that you get by being in a city like this, who's you know, existence has been, you know, threatened, if you will, by this volcano on the doorstep. Um, and it's grown up into this very thriving city. Uh, and so they have a big, wide, you know, um, main street uh, with shops all along it and uh, an amazing fish market. So it's a, it's a cool stop, a nice place. Uh, and with any luck, we'll uh, try to take in, they have a, a fantastic theater there, we'll try to take in a production. So all of those details are obviously subject to scheduling, and they often don't know uh, more than a month or so in advance. Um, but it's all of what's on our radar screen and is fun. The most, uh, probably the most famous uh, sort of tourist spot beach destination in Sicily is Taormina. This is about an hour and 15 minutes uh, from Syracuse to the north. Um, the actual town itself is set way up on a hill with commanding views. You can see right over to the mainland of Italy on one side, of course, Mount Etna, like you can see here in the background. Um, and so Taormina is just, it's just a magical city. You walk through it, um, all the shops and uh, delicatessens and 
uh, just the whole vibe of it is it's it's a it's a wonderful place. Um, in fact, we contemplated even having the live away here, but you know I'm one of those people and I and I think I have a pretty good sense of our members that you know we like to have charm and we like to have the the feel of being in a town that's large enough and has the vibe but it isn't exactly the tourist mecca so you know um if I listen around and I hear all kinds of you know foreign voices and and you know accents that you know I think mm, maybe too many tourists here you go to Ortigia um which is equally as nice a city but just a little bit further off the 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 beaten track for the um, you know, for, for tourists from overseas. So um, we can go and spend a wonderful day in Taormina and, uh, uh, and, and take it all in, be very happy to be back um, in Ortigia at the end of the day. Uh, Sicily is as known for its wines as uh, many other parts of Italy. Uh, those of you that are, you know, aficionados will have probably had Nero Davola before, which is sort of the uh, red wine grape of Sicily. Um, so we can, we, we don't have to venture too far to find some wineries and we'll go to three in particular where we'll get to meet uh, the family, uh, the vintner, sample some of the products and see the, the terroir and the climate and so on that differentiates uh, Sicily's wines from so, so many other uh, and another thing that's, you know, quite famous, not only in Sicily, but different parts of Italy, of course, is truffles. Uh, and in the springtime, we're typically just entering into truffle season. So uh, you can see how, you know, where the truffles uh, originate from. So, of course, they're, they're mushrooms or fungi. And uh, uh, so maybe we'll have a chance to even pick some, you know, they get sniffed out by, by dogs and so on and so forth. But more importantly, how to cook with truffles, right? We all like sort of truffles, but because of the, the very high cost of them, you're not all, always too sure how, uh, you know, what's the best way to prepare them. So, um, so uh, we'll have a chance, we'll have our, uh, have our hand at a truffle cooking class. Um, and again, that's just a few examples of some of the excursions that we would do um, while we're there. We're, we're working on a whole bunch. As I say, I spent some time there with my colleague uh, a few weeks back. Uh, and I was just so excited because there were there were so many neat places to go and things to see. So I'll share with you a little bit of information about it. Of course, all the details are in our brochure. Um, so this portion of our program, this part of our live away, uh, part one, we're calling it of Sicily in Syracuse. Um, we'll be staying at the Allo Giudeca uh, residence hotel that I mentioned before. Um, so for the two weeks, uh, it'll be coming in around 3880. Uh, double and the single supplement, see, su supplement here you'll notice is quite modest. So this is quite a good one for our solo travelers uh, because we have a special arrangement. They have a slightly smaller room size that's available for single travelers. So, um, and of course, what does that all include? I won't go through all the details. The important thing here though is, is that you can see that there's an activity credit of $1,000 uh, per person that uh, applies to all the different things that you can do. So um, our experience has been that pe this is very well received because uh, some people like to come and really just hang out and relax and you know do a couple of things, but not too much. Um, and I know that we had some members that we issued refunds to for what they didn't spend on the activity credit. So if you don't spend it, uh, we'll give it back to you. Um, but others that want to do something every day, uh, in which case you're going to spend more than $1,000 but you get to choose uh, the pace that you want to go at and, and sort of the budget that you want to spend and so on. Um, and of course, all of the other things that are included in our programs, you know, breakfast every day, lunches on most of the excursions, uh, and um, uh, obviously our host or hosts will be there for the, for the whole time. Um, and we, we bring you in from the airport or from the ferry terminal if you're coming from Malta. Um, so all those other things are, are taken care of. And so it's just a matter of eating out and eating out in Ortigia, uh, you know, you could uh, uh, you can you can eat out for ten euros and have a have a lovely meal, a delicious Sicilian pizza or or some pasta or something like that. Or you can go to a fantastic Michelin star restaurant. So and everything in between. That's the beauty of it here. Uh, as far as exclusions are concerned, as usual, the only key ones here are airfare and insurance uh, that are important, and we will uh, are able to help you with both of those. Uh, with airfares, just to give you a, a sense, um, you're probably looking around $1,100, $1,200 to get 
uh, into uh, Sicily and back or into Malta returning from Sicily. Uh, of course, there's still a lot of volatility in the, uh, in the, with the airfares. But then other nice thing about traveling in a little bit the shoulder season is that uh, it's, you don't have the, the pressure on, on, on air prices like you have in the high season. Uh, so now it's time to get your questions answered. But of course, usually I find a lot of the questions come up um, after the webinar. And so uh, you're welcome to drop us a note, give us a call, and uh, we'll get your questions answered. And I think a couple have come in already. Uh, and yes. yeah, please and, uh, ans I don't know, put any <laughs> questions that you have into the Q&A box uh, so that we have them. And yeah, here we go. So Paula, do we have any questions? I see one uh, from Paul. Actually, this was one I had written down that came in. Uh, by email before because they were wondering about how warm is it? <laughs> Can I swim in the Mediterranean? Uh, and so I didn't see if Paul is on the webinar or not, but in any event, I'll, I'll answer, I'll address the question. Um, the weather at this time of the year in uh, sort of mid-March is typically in the high teens. It can even get to 20, 21 degrees. Uh, in the evening, it can drop down to sort of, you know, 12, 13 degrees. So it's kind of a perfect time to go weather-wise. The sea is going to be a bit cool, quite honestly. It's probably around 14, 15 degrees uh, in March. So uh, for those that like a bit of a cooler dip, it is still swimmable. But I think for, for most of us, it's probably on the chilly side to be swimming uh, in the Mediterranean. Paula, did you see any other questions come in? We do. Uh, Margaret was asking to reconfirm the dates. Okay, so the dates uh, are, we're at the beginning of the webinar, which I have to go back to. Do you have them in front of them? <laughs> in front of you there, Paula? Just pulling them up myself because I don't have them memorized. <laughs> Let me... uh, as I were, uh, yeah, I have to go back to the beginning. It's in March. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. If I if I go back to the beginning, and in, in any event, uh, um, Margaret, we will we will email you the dates with the brochure if you didn't get a copy already. It's uh, roughly around the sixth of March. I can't um, I can't open it while I'm in the webinar. <laughs> I'm I'm pulling it up, so I'll get March sixth to, to the twentieth. See, Rita's got in front of it. Thanks, thank you, Rita. March sixth <laughs> to the twentieth. March sixth to the twentieth is uh, part one. So this one here in uh, in in Syracuse. And then part two, which again, I haven't introduced yet, is going to be on the north coast of Sicily. That will be the following two weeks. So it'll be March 20th to April the 3rd. Okay, so that's when Sicily is happening. Uh, good. And let's see, I think that's it for questions. We had a question, sorry, come in here, oh, Gordon, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. with regards to the terrain um, for the excursions and just every day getting around. Can you address that? Yeah, for sure. That's a great question. So, I mean, this is an, this is an old city, uh, as are all of the cities pretty much in Sicily. And so um, the terrain in throughout the town is cobblestone. Now, the nice thing is it's flat. So unlike other some of our other destinations like uh, Madeira, which is all hills pretty much, uh, in Syracuse, everything is flat other than some a few stairs here and there. So that's one uh, big benefit. Some of the towns that we go to, you know, like Noto is on a little bit of a hill or Palazzo Acreide or uh, uh, they, you know, they have definitely some climbing up and down. We'll always put it in the description of our excursions on our detailed excursion um, agenda so that you have a sense of how challenging it is. Um, but even Mount Etna, you can go up to the top of the mountain and there's a short walk from where the Jeeps end to a viewpoint that's a couple of hundred meters and you are walking on lava rock. So it's, you know, it's a little bit more uneven, but it's, it's doable for most. So hopefully that answers the question. Perfect. I think that was great. Good. And I see a request for a brochure. So yes, we will send you, if you didn't already get a copy, we will send you a copy of our brand new Sicily Liveaway brochure uh, together with uh, the replay of this webinar that will be done uh, roughly in the next 24 hours. Um, and I'm sure there'll be other questions that pop up. We'd be delighted to have you along on this trip. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, and you're really going to learn a lot and you're going to see a part of, uh, of Sicily and a part of Italy that is so different than the other parts. 
Um, and as I mentioned, I'll be launching in a couple of weeks. I'm keeping it a secret for now, our program in the north coast of Sicily that will follow that. And then right after that, we're going to be heading up to Amalfi. So we're going to have a further live away two weeks uh, in Sorrento, which is uh, just uh, uh, at the edge of the Amalfi coast uh, in Campania, Italy. So uh, you could theoretically do uh, two weeks, uh, uh, two weeks on the east coast of Sicily, two weeks on the north coast, two weeks on the Amalfi, and then it'll continue on up to Tuscany from there. Any combination will work. So as uh, much as or as little as you'd like to do, it's, uh, it's all in the cards. Uh, and we'd love to get your feedback on it. So just a reminder, uh, uh, we're going to be having next week on our regular date. So today we had a bit of a, a different date because of my travel schedule, but we'll be back to Thursday, May the 26th. I'll be coming back to you with our live away. This is a repeat of our Cyprus program. Uh, happening next year and we're delighted to be going back and I'll be sharing with you some of the feedback from our members who came with us in Cyprus and Paula has put the information in the chat box so if you haven't already signed up you want to find out a little bit about Cyprus and the fun time that we had this year you can join us on the 26th of May thank you for your time I hope you'll join us I always love to do these webinars uh, and uh, even though I can't see your faces I'm sure they're smiling um, because weather's getting warm it's getting nice in Canada summer's coming uh, and uh, that's always a good thing so thank you for joining us thanks for your time and uh, look forward to connecting up with you all again very very soon <laughs>